Good morning, everybody. How are we doing? My gosh, time for another webinar, huh? And this is a special webinar with another Ask Us Anything. Uh, if you are a huge fan of our updates and our rapid updates, and you then you might have noticed over the last couple of months, we haven't had a lot of updates. And that's because we've been really tearing away and rebuilding the ref note schedule. Uh, pretty big project. And um, well, we've got a lot to show. Um, so hopefully you are a big fan of ref notes and ref note schedule. And um, uh, you want to see what we're working on, because that's what we're going to show you. We're going to show you some of the behind the scenes uh, progress. And we're also going to give you the ability to run this new beta version of the ref note schedule and incorporate your feedback before we roll it out as an official thing. It's kind of an exciting thing, huh? So I hope you're going to bring lots of questions. And that's what that Q&A button at the bottom of your screen is for. If you click that, that's going to make it give you a little pop-up window, make it really easy for you to type in your questions. And you're also going to be able to see the answers that we type to other people's questions. Because um, we probably won't be able to get to every single question that comes in in the webinar. So, you know, it makes a great little companion um, while you're here with us. So anyway, you know, that's kind of enough of my yibber yabber. Um, I'm going to get this hand over to Jesse so we can get this moving right forward. Thank you very much, Jer, for the intro. And good morning, everyone, viewers, present and future. Thank you very much for taking the time to view and listen to this webinar. I'm really grateful to be presenting it to you today. My name is Jeffy. I work on the irrigation team here at Land Effects. Um, and I'm coming to you today from Seattle, Washington. It's a beautiful summer day here. And I'm really looking forward to taking a paddleboard out onto Lake Washington after I'm done with work today. As Jared said, we are going to be talking about ref note schedules. Um, here is a short outline of what it is that we're going to be getting into. Um, I'll, we'll, I will be very briefly covering um, like what is a reference note, just for a little bit of context. We'll be diving into some really cool history of land effects reference notes. Um, as far as it is uh, my understanding, it seems like reference notes might be celebrating their 25th anniversary this year. So that is really cool to me. Again, I'm really grateful to be presenting this tool today. Um, we'll be looking at our development roadmap, uh, talking a little bit about our open call for testing right now, and then we'll be getting into a really cool demonstration, uh, dialogue tour, going over all the new capabilities. And then uh, last but not least, the whole point of this, an open Q&A. All right, so what is a reference note? A reference note is a text notation to some aspect of the project. It can reference a schedule note, blocks, objects, polylines, and hatches. It's called out by text that is then organized by a number. Um, that organization is, uh, oh, excuse me, by a number CSI division or a letter identifier, a one or two letter identifier. And the reference note schedule organizes those and displays the descriptions, quantities, details, and a bunch of other things too. So here's some examples of what reference notes look like, look like in a plan. Um, and then some examples of the various land effects reference note callout styles that we offer within the software. And then here is a lot more info on ref notes. We have great webinars and great documentation actually covering the usage of and what a ref note is. Um, it's a lot of content. So I have those linked here uh, when the webinar goes on our website. Um, this information will be linked there as well too. If you are not aware, um, or used to using ref notes, um, definitely head there and take the time to watch these. All right, history of ref notes. So in 1999, Jeremiah's dad, landscape architect David Farmer, he wanted a simple way to place callouts referencing a note. Um, and they had a dream and a need for site objects to be both called out and quantified in a schedule and a plan. So Jer got to work. And this is the 1999 ref note manager and edit ref note dialogue. Um, I love looking at this because to me, it one, just the, the level of familiarity in there just says, you know, like how the, uh, the plan and the goal has stayed true the entire time. And to me, it's a really good example of, you know, if, if something isn't broke, don't fix it. There only leaves room for improvement. 
And as we look at that improvement, um, 2005 saw the additions of detail assignments, different leader options, divisions, different object types. Um, it still didn't have the ability to edit the number quite yet, um, but Jared and his dad were working continuously with Walt Disney Imagineering and they played a very crucial role in, in early RefNote development. And here are some examples of that 2005 RefNote manager and edit RefNote dialog, um, starting to look a little more familiar, but we also noticed some of the, uh, the site items are things that have been pulled out into other dialogues and we'll get into that later as well. The 2010 edit ref note dialog, um, we can see some new options like cost, detail, layer, user fields. Depth is added in there now. We have um, improved symbol callout and leader options inside the edit ref note dialog. And here's the 2016 ref note manager. Um, a big addition here was that it became a dockable palette. And again, Everything has stayed familiar. Everything's looking pretty similar, but all we're seeing is just continued improvements. And here is a present day edit ref note dialog and manager. Um, we can just see that it, it's gone nowhere but up since its, uh, since its inception. Um, and it's just a, an amazing tool, a really good looking tool, very intuitive and it has, has so much power. All right, so getting into our development roadmap, a big thing here was the discovery that whether a schedule um, is plotted with grid lines or not, um, it can still be used as a table. Um, and when um, that development discovery was made, um, we made the decision to release it first into the irrigation schedule. Um, that was the scheduling system and land effects that seemed like it, it needed that capability first. Um, and then it was released into the planting schedule. And since it was released into the irrigation schedule and then into the planting schedule, it has just offered us nothing but the ability to perfect it, work out all of the kinks and get as much user feedback as possible. Um, because the ref note schedule is so important and tied to so many things, um, it was important for us to, to test it out in those ways first. Um, and it's, already seen so many new capabilities that um, you can either experience in the irrigation schedule or in the planting schedule, like the ability to edit placed schedules rather than regenerating a schedule with the different options, um, all work area schedules, and just one of the biggest ones, they are so fast. They are so fast to create. Today's land effects schedule code increases agility. Um, the under the hood components really make improvements a lot easier. So it's, um, we're a lot more agile and can respond to user feedback and bug fixes a lot easier. Um, and these table style schedules allow us to never be done and allow for continued influence, which again is, you know, one of our core principles here at Land Effects. And this new code that we're implementing across our schedules um, allows us to really stand behind that. And under the hood, the ref note schedule code powers 11 plus other schedules. And we can see those here in this chart. The ref note schedule on a back end point of view is the same as the civil survey legend, the concept graphic schedule, the detail report, the irrigation zoning schedule, the keynote schedule, lighting schedule, northing and easting, northing and easting point schedule, the project list, the sheet index, the spot elevation schedule, and the zoning schedule. Um, but for more information about all of those site tools, Amanda very recently did a fantastic webinar diving into those. So again, this webinar will be linked in the, um, the notes of this webinar once it goes live. So make sure to check that out if you want more information on some of those schedules that I just covered. All right, talking about what has been done and your first sneak peek, if you have yet to see it still at the new ref note schedule dialogue. Uh, we've achieved the table style ref note schedule, the amenity blocks. I can't wait to show it off to you. They're looking really good. Uh, we've got a, a sort by option. Now we have the all work area schedule option. Uh, we have user fields that can be specific to subdivisions or in that the, uh, the user fields that are applied to a division, they carry through to the subdivisions within that division as well. Uh, the ref note schedule checks for length layers now. Previously, if there is only length ref note items in a drawing, 
and those length ref note items had not had a call out placed on them yet, the ref note schedule um, would not pick them up, but it is now capable of picking those up. The symbol and the code are now in separate columns. We have a photo column, which yes, that means you can now attach a photo to a ref note item and run a ref note schedule with photos included. I know that was a, a very big request, so I'm, I'm pretty stoked to see that come to life. The lake symbols display in schedules. Again, another thing I cannot wait to show you. The cell content alignment improvements, uh, space below description logic revised. The spacing within this schedule is just, it's really beautiful. It's really comfortable to look at. The ability to edit, and honestly, my slide ran out of room to put in more of the things that we've accomplished with this rough note schedule. And what's ahead? Um, we're still working on railing objects displaying in the schedule and then just more improvements to our available railing options and the functions and everything in there as well. Um, the ability to show either division or subdivision titles, um, ref note items coming into plant schedules, custom division sorting, and then one of the big ones um, in our future, uh, porting the ref note schedule into Revit. So our development is based on our own wants and vision and then yours, our users and our clients. Um, we use the, we try to use the community forum to announce testing opportunities. Um, so here's another link um, that we'll post with this webinar on our website and it's gonna go to our current community forum post right now for the, the ref note schedule beta testing as well as all of the other site schedule beta testing. So please um, head to this after this presentation uh, read through everything. Amanda's been um, spear, spearheading that post there. Read through everything, um, get into testing, and then put together some really constructive criticism for us and come back to the community forum post. And get it in there, let other people see it, let other people agree to it or say, you know, say their piece as well. Um, and just a, um, a reminder that we are designers and you are designers, so we love examples. If you want to mock something up, if you want to take an existing schedule and you want to annotate it, whatever you can do to uh, communicate your vision for what you would want a ref note schedule to both be able to do as far as options within the dialogue and both be able to do as in the, uh, the final product that goes out on your, on your documents. Uh, we would love to see those examples. All right. And with all of these new schedules comes new commands. So right now, um, these are all of the commands that you can use to access the new scheduling systems. We are going to switch all of these to defaults in August. Um, and just a heads up on that, uh, that there is no need for um, legacy commands. Everything is going to transition over uh, without issue and seamlessly. Um, so the, the current ref note schedule in August uh, will just automatically become the ref note schedule new and things will carry on and only get better. All right, what do we say? We go into CAD and let's start checking it out. So I have made my ref note schedule new command to be RFN. I'm a big shortcut command person. So I'm going to enter in RFN right now and we can see that it's pulling up ref note schedule new. And right away, we're gonna see this awesome thing that we first released with the plant schedule. The regen, the edit, the new, and the regen all button. This dialog is great, um, very convenient, and allows for a lot of flexibility. I'm gonna go ahead and select new here so that we can start, you know, ooing and aahing over this new ref note schedule dialog. And I'm going to pull in the old dialog here just so we can do a little compare and contrast and just really see how much we improved it. And as you're looking at it, if you use the software regularly, um, you're probably noticing something that looks pretty familiar here as well too. We've really been trying to go for increased usability and increased familiarity within the software. And so we chose to make the new ref note schedule look as familiar to the plant schedule. Um, really in a, a hoped way to that if people are feeling apprehensive about approaching and incorporating the ref note system into their daily workflow, um, you already know how to use the schedule. You already know how to start figuring it out and figuring out how it's gonna be working for you.
All right, going through some of our new options that we have in here. First and foremost, we can see these photo checkboxes in here. That's gonna work very similar to the plant schedule. And looking up into the options section in the dialog box up here in the upper right corner, um, we've got space above header options. We have space below description options. And a great one here, we have the column widths where you can set all of these column widths in here. These are our default options that are going to be available to you right away. And I want to say that these default options mean um, they're going to they're gonna set from a, a default width, and then they're going to expand to the content within them up to a set point that uh, we have built into the software, and then they'll begin wrapping. Any values that you begin to put in here are going to be reflected back in a, um, a by units value, which is going to be inches or millimeters. And that is going to scale depending on your land effects plot scale that you use. Then onto your sheet. So if I were to put a one in symbol and a one in code, that means that that cell is going to scale to be one inches through your viewport on your sheet. I'm going to remove those. And you just say OK to instill those um, column widths in there. And then just like the rest of the schedule works, those column widths uh, will stick. So as you repeatedly um, use new schedules, um, that will be the last option set in there. And then, of course, all of these are reflected back into your ref note references. So those can be um, set, and then you can forget about it there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just show off the speed, the capability of it, and just show how good this schedule looks. I'm gonna select an entire palette schedule. I'm gonna get all the photos in there. I'm gonna get all the symbols. I'm gonna have all of my callouts be blocks as well. And I think I'm gonna start out with grid lines on. Let's look, look at it first with the grid lines plotting. Seriously, look at that speed. So fast. Seriously, so fast. Let's look at. Let's start looking at the uh, the symbol columns. This is something we put a lot of care into. We can see that everything is going to be um, it's going to be aligned top center, and all amenity symbols, regardless of what they are and what their size is on the plan, are going to scale to a similar size. The hatches are going to fill their cell. And so it's just going to, you know, really increase the uh, readability by whoever it is that's reading the plan, being able to see, you know, even if um, some of these landscape containers, even if some of these benches are, you know, they're teeny tiny on the plan, they'll be able to look back at the schedule and everything's going to be a nice even size. And then it, it looks like none of the photos came in. Let's see if we can get the photos to come in without doing an entire palette. And we'll run a entire drawing schedule. And to do an entire drawing schedule, I'm referencing the command line within the carrots. I'm going to right click for entire drawing. And let's see if it pulls those photos in. You know, it's still not pulling the photos in. Yeah, maybe just double check. Go ahead and edit one of those ref notes and make sure there's a photo assigned. Yeah, let's do that. All right, do more 294.50 table. Edit it. Let's make sure my photo assignment didn't go anywhere. OK. Hmm. And maybe that. Um, re-triggered the connection to regen an existing schedule now i just select regen and i'm going to want to select the actual table lines if the table didn't have any grid lines when i'm going to regen the grid lines would then come back in and you won't be able to regen the schedule by selecting one of the blocks one of the block callouts or a hatch or a symbol, you will want to select one of the actual table lines to reach in. Let's see if we can pull those photos in.
<clears throat> Odd. I should though. Hmm. Um, Okay, uh, what? I'll uh, I'll go ahead. I'll, I'll take a look at photos. You can kind of move on and show other things. sounds good. Thanks, Jared. Appreciate it. I may have screwed something up with playing around everything this morning. I was pretty excited to do this presentation and I couldn't stop messing around with things all morning up until it was time for us to get this going. Um, so on to the next really cool feature. We have web pages that can be inserted into the ref note schedule. And these are a usable and clickable link. Um, and I think right away, this is just really awesome to, uh, you know, put together like a, um, like an entire palette schedule and just get it set off to the side. Anytime you need to reference something immediately, you can just, you can control click on one of these and it's gonna take you right to the web page. Really cool feature. And I will of course show how to actually put that into a ref now item. And then also another really cool feature that we've put together is inserting an RGB value into a ref note schedule cell to then be reflected as the actual color of the item. And with that, let's run an entire palette schedule without the grid lines on. So again, these are all ref note table schedules, um, regardless whether the grid lines plot or they don't plot. Select entire palette. Everything is nice and organized. I do look like, it seems like there is a little bit of um, squeezing and everything in there. It's a little tight for myself, you know, just from my own point of view. So with that would be a good opportunity to show off how to do the column widths. So I'm gonna leave all of my settings as is, and let's see how a symbol and a code cell at one inch look. And again, these are going to scale based on your land effects plot scale. I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck photo on all of those. Um, several of these options will check for all of the ref note types below them. And that is photo, cost, and detail. Yeah, and just setting that that one inch value there really created a nice buffer in between the block callout and some of these hatches. And then if I don't like the way that these block callouts, how close that they are, um, depending on uh, my plot settings, this could bleed and those could touch. I can adjust those. with a either a space below description or the space above header. The space below description is going to cover this spacing between the block callouts. I'm gonna say, okay. Yeah, look at that. Very fast, really easy to make adjustments, really easy to develop a personal standard either for yourself or for your team. And continuing on with example schedules, one of our new features that is now available with the ref node schedules and all work areas. So referencing the command line, we can see that all work areas is in brackets. The A is highlighted in blue. I know it is hard to see. So I'm selecting A and then space. That lets the system know to quantify and look for everything in every work area. And I have a number of work areas set up in this plan and they're all associated with the sheet that those material items are going to be represented on. And we can see how the ref note schedule quantified all of those items depending on their location within what work area. Continuing on with some more examples, one of the cooler examples and cooler features that we have available in this is length. 
items now display the actual line type within the schedule. And so I have some fence examples here set up and I have a sheet set up so that we can see how that actually works. I'll do a plot preview here. And that's just really clean. It looks great. It's gonna make referencing the line types a lot easier. Yeah, and that's awesome. I love that. And that is um, one of our intended plans for the railing objects as well. We would love to eventually get the, uh, the railing objects in so that they show as well. Okay, back to more Refno examples. Let's run one. How about, let's do only code. And let's do let's do an only code schedule. You know what? And let me edit one. I'm gonna edit this guy and I'm gonna remove the callout blocks. So again, to edit, I'm gonna select the actual grid lines. And I'm gonna turn these callouts to text. That edit feature is so cool. No more making a new schedule taking the existing schedule, deleting it, you know, putting a little a non-plot marker on there to know exactly where you had that schedule to make sure that it fits in the correct place on your sheet again. You can just use the edit button and you can edit the existing schedule right there. Okay, more schedule examples. You can now run, Sorry, still working through the, the habits of going up to the ref node dropdown for the schedule. You can now run a single division schedule. So let's run a single one on, let's do it on exterior improvements. And say we wanted to stack multiple schedules, multiple single division schedules. So I'm gonna run one. I'm gonna do the entire drawing. I'm gonna place that there. And then all subsequent single division schedules, I can then remove the title. Um, and let's get, let's get furnishings in there as well. So that's how you can approach stacking the single division schedules. And actually that is something new that we have added in that I have just not adjusted yet is the singular schedule language string um, that we added in because of this. Your language strings are accessed in your general preferences. And so with that schedule coming in in all caps, I would just come in here and I would write it exactly as I want to. And I can say, okay, and say, okay there. And that is how you can adjust the word schedule in these new ref note schedules now. All right, we've got a lot of different schedules to keep showing off, including a new feature that we have now available in Excel. So I'm just gonna select this spreadsheet option. I'm gonna say, okay, and I'm gonna go all divisions, bring my title back in, I'm gonna say, okay, that's gonna kick me into Excel. Once I choose what it is that I want to schedule, I'm saying the entire drawing, that pops open Excel. And we've added this unit column into Excel. And that's just gonna, whatever it is that you use um, Excel for in conjunction with our schedules, um, we've already developed that unit column in there for you. All right, so let's look at Let's look at how to add an RGB value to something. So I'll go over here to, I'll use my little test guy over here and say, I want to, I want to add an RGB value to this paver. Let's see if I have a, a color field in here. It looks like I don't. So I'm going to add a field for, I'm gonna name it color naturally. 
I'm going to make this a text object. I'm going to say, okay. We'll say, okay, there. I'm gonna edit this object again so that I can apply the information I want to inside of that field. To do this, I'm going to type R G B, and this is important, no space, immediately a parentheses. And you know, let's look up the color of a nice gray, an RGB value of a nice gray. So I'm going to do the values, comma, value, comma, the typical RGB standard. And I'll say, okay. And I'm going to regenerate this schedule. Regen, see this is a no grid plot schedule. When I go to regen, it pulls those grid lines back in. I'm gonna select one of those grid lines and let's see if we get that color box. Oh wow, I accidentally made a whole new schedule, but we can see that Tekel block paper right there. It's got gray in there now. Again, just another, uh, you know, when presenting our, um, our options to clients, it's just gonna be another nice visual touch to be able to show people um, to try and win them over on your designs. And then I'm gonna remove that guy. Let's add a, let's, here, we'll just edit one of these. And I think I have a hyperlink placed in here. And actually I don't. So I should have the web page for this mulch up. So I'm going to copy that link. And this is a either text line or multi-text line field. So you, you choose those options here. I've titled this field web page. I'm going to paste it into there. Say, okay, I'm gonna run a schedule based on this work area. Why did you cancel out? Oh, I accidentally sent it to Excel, excuse me. There's that web page for that mulch manufacturer. I'm control clicking and telling Excel to go away. And there's the mulch that we're specking. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right. And if any of you did not know, here, let me get this. Uh, my ref note manager pulled up. Um, kind of one of the hidden secrets to uh, plant schedule troubleshooting is that if any plants get deleted from the manager, but those plants have been placed into your drawing, you could use edit plant or any of our other edit object uh, tools. And you can select one of the plants that has been deleted from the plant manager, and then you can run a plant schedule and it will pull all of that uh, plant data back into your plant manager because the schedule it scans the drawing for any land effects data that has been applied to any of the objects within there. We have now made that a possibility with the ref note manager as well, which is going to be awesome for all of you in your troubleshooting. The cool thing is that if the ref note item is placed into the drawing, you can actually just skip the step with the, um, the planting objects where you have to edit the plant and pull the data of at least one plant back into the manager. So I can go ahead and I know I have a bunch of, like I have these demo notes placed in my plan. So I can just go ahead and mass delete those. And I have all of these concrete types. I have these placed into my plan as well. So I'm gonna delete those. And I'm just going to run a entire drawing schedule. Right-clicking for entire drawing.
Look at that. Watched all of them just pop back in. So cool. Okay. You know, and I think I am at the end of my mini. Excuse me, I didn't mean to pull that up. I am at the end of my mini things that I had set aside to demo. Um, do we have any questions that I should get into right away? Well, we've certainly got some great questions and now's a great time awesome. for people to also get in more. Um, Cause it's true. We definitely have plenty of time to, uh, to go over some things. Um, oh my gosh. Let's see here. Where to even begin. Um, <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Looks um, like, you know, we oh. had a comment about uh, someone's, you know, the ref note schedule dialogue looking differently. So again, this is still going to be the ref note schedule dialogue that you are used to and have been using. This, this is going to become this in August. You will see this come in in August again, if you want to. If you're a shortcut person like myself, excuse me, um, I turned it into RFN ref note schedule new. And then, um, yeah, so we also, there was a good one here is I'm just uh, I'm asking, like you had mentioned, we will be adding custom division sorting soon so that'll be nice that was a, a definitely a uh, high requested one yeah awesome yeah i think i think that will be a really powerful feature and we um, appreciate everyone who's chimed in um also you know putting their vote in for that feature coming to life and um kind of a, an interesting um almost obscure one you know there is there is a lot of connections there is a lot of a, a lot of ability to connect ref notes with details. Um, of course, you know, the obvious that you can see right in front of you, you can assign a detail to a ref note. Uh, but someone asked about having a reference in the detail back to the ref note. And you can actually do that as well. Uh, you can customize the detail template uh, with a ref note uh, attribute tag, and, and that'll get automatically filled out. We do have documentation on that. Um, just want to mention that one, but because um, inevitably these discussions of ref notes do do, do involve details, um, and so as an example, you can also add the ref note callout uh, to be added to the detail callout. I don't know if anyone ever noticed that. Is that little checkbox when you place a detail callout that says ref note? Um, so we just have a lot of uh, those little hooks uh, between the two. Um, and let me see, just kind of give me a minute here to kind of look through and um, find another question here. Did you want me to see if I could troubleshoot the photo thing? Because I could try. Oh, yeah, it looks you know, like I did. I did lose the reference to them. So maybe I you, could. Yeah, if you just, if you can, if you probably either yeah, get those out or just simply restart CAD if you have to. Um, yeah, it does look like that's the issue. Let's do it. We love live troubleshooting. We also, have to do it, it as, oh, go ahead, Amanda. Yeah, it looked like uh, it wasn't letting you detach. So those images might have accidentally gotten into the XREF uh, that you have linked into that drawing. Mm. Good point, good point. Yeah, the land effects staff has to do daily, hourly troubleshooting, just like all of you do. That's one of the things that keeps us so sharp and on our toes and able to assist everyone as well as we can. And then um, while you are going through that, there was a question of, is there a way to duplicate an existing reference note? And while there isn't a copy button in there in the ref note manager, I'd say a, a, some good ways of accomplishing that you can repeatedly import things from templates. So making sure to utilize your templates a bit more effectively. Uh, the next time you import it, it will import with a new number. Uh, so that that's one way to duplicate it. Otherwise, just uh, making a new ref note and copying and pasting the notes from one to the other, of course, 
always works. All right, drum roll. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's what I'm talking about. I know this is just, I have fielded a lot of these requests and we've made it a reality. Photos, high quality images, scaling to the same cell size. That's awesome. And there's your troubleshooting tidbit too. When you go to run your ref note schedule again and you can't get the photos to come through, it looks like I just needed to restart tab. That made it an option for me to be able to detach the the images that have become unreferenced from the XREF manager, and then I was able to run a schedule again and pull them back in. Yeehaw, there we are. Um, and then as for, you know, good comment on just overall schedule. Um, basically, we're looking at probably somewhere in September we'll be rolling this out. Um, is about the okay. best guess, best answer I could give everybody now. Um, do encourage people to use the the command to test it out. But basically, the like I said, very rough schedule is we we want to get it certainly released, um, you know, by September in September, roughly that time frame. You know, people always want us to want to nail us down, and sometimes we have to be a little vague because we got to buy ourselves some time. <laughs> yeah, awesome, awesome. Um, I'm seeing a question come through on what to do with a long ref note schedule. Um, let's see if I can make this guy fit on a sheet. So I'm going to go over here to my, and make sure I save this. I'm going to go over here to my ref note sheet file. Always a handy trick and a great opportunity for viewports. I already have two viewports created in here, so I'm gonna make sure I can unlock both of these. Um, and I want, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. because I'm gonna copy this viewport, I think, and let's make it into nice schedule size. I'm going to use Zoom object. I'm gonna select this schedule. Space bar, that's going to just kick me out into space. Let's see if it pulls me back in. It didn't. That didn't go as planned. So I'm just going to go find him out here. Set my viewport scale. So we can already see. This is a giant, giant schedule. So let's see how much we can get fitting on here. I'm gonna stop it at demolition because I like to it stop before a subdivision um, just to keep the and we'll stop it here. Let's say we didn't have as many user fields included. I'll stop it here before the finish as well. So we've got, got our symbols in. I'm stopping before the next subdivision and I'm stopping before one of those user fields. And I am just going to copy this viewport from this point here. And I'm gonna move it over there. I'm gonna lock this guy, good viewport practice. And then I'm going to adjust this schedule just to begin like that. That might not even be the end of this schedule because this is an enormous entire palette schedule. And that's just the environment we're working with right now and pull this down. If I wanted to, I could take a polyline that uses this similar line weight of this reference, reference notes schedule if I wanted to continue that title bar across here. And then that's splitting up a, um, a reference note schedule. Say I wanted to take a really long reference note schedule 
and I wanted to show, say, just the masonry here, and I wanted to cut out all of these um, subsequent divisions, and then just like start here, same thing, but I would then cut them and then I could stack them to make it look like it was one long continuous schedule. And that's again, why we use viewports with non-plot lines, um, uh, just a little bit of a, you know, visual magic there on your sheet. And actually in viewing that, I just realized that I left out a really cool ref note schedule feature that we also implemented. And that is sorting by object type. So I'm going to run an entire palette schedule again, and it's going to sort by whether it's a, um, a polyline, a hatch, or a block, and it's going to put like items with like items. And so we have our uh, lines falling in together. We have all of our blocks running together, and then we have all of our hatches being grouped together. Yeah, I really like how that ends up looking personally. Um, one other thing that usually comes up, like a big question that always comes in on tickets and uh, people looking to optimize space on their sheet is how do they get their ref note schedule looking like actually being smaller? And I just wanted to throw some tips out there. Uh, yeah. In particular, like not showing photos not showing <laughs> um symbols and showing the the um the code as text instead of block the callouts as text instead of block that's going to really bring the oh and then um also we have that space above header and space below dis, uh descriptions yeah, we can crank that all the way down and really cram in a lot of information now. That was one request for us to be able to do so that we can make a, a schedule that's really long be a lot tinier. And then, of course, like we have all those um, those fields taking up mm -hmm. space width wise. So being more um, optimizing your field usage a little bit more maybe using some multi-line fields instead of a uh, single line, that sort of, that sort of thing. Yep. And then I've, I've actually usually found the schedule with the grid line showing to usually be a little bit tighter than uh, without showing. Yeah, so these are my tips. Yeah, Bye. look at that. Look through Amanda's tips what we're able to reduce this schedule to. And that's still a lot of information being displayed there. We we really, other than the user fields, we didn't subtract any information other than, you know, good visual indicators on the plan, but it's still there. Yeah, for the, uh, you know, with those grid lines showing, I, I went for just pure minimal space. Um, and so you can see, I mean, you know, the, 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 the space between items, um, are, you know, it's very, very close. And so it's just utilizing that visible line to tell the difference between them. So if the grid lines non-plot, the only, you, you, the only ability to get a demarcation between items is to have a little bit of space. Um, and so that is the, the difference between them, but tr still try to keep it as minimal as possible. Um, but, um, we received a lot of schedules from users. And um, and that really helped always to just see how you're using the software and seeing that that space is basically always an issue, right? And when it comes down to it, it's the, the real estate on that sheet is the most expensive real estate in the world, right? <laughs> so if you can always make it smaller, the better. So always going for, for pure minimal. But yeah, if you're really, really pressed for every imaginable inch of space uh, with grid lines visible, we'll save that last little you know, two percent of space yeah and it does it does look like there is a question for how to use ref note divisions and preferences um if people are not aware um your ref note preferences hold all of your divisions um as well as your user fields uh, those are accessed um whenever you're on your ribbon tabs associated with those tools it brings up a direct link to those associated preferences or from the FX admin tab, you can access all of those preferences. 
Um, once your ref note preferences pull up, then that gives you access to all of our stock divisions plus anything else that you want. And those are associated with the active preference set. So you can create different preference sets with different ref note divisions, either depending on the client that you're working for or um, just maybe internal improvements or you're just testing things out to see how everything works. Um, those are as simple as selecting an existing division if you want to or having nothing selected. I'm not sure if I can deselect anything there, but once I select new, I can then add, choose to add in a new division. So depending on how I title it is where it would fall in line with these existing divisions or with this paving highlighted, I can then select subdivision and then I can create a subdivision in there. And it looks like we already have some subdivisions created in here with a numeric division assigned to them. So underneath this paving category, we have the numeric divisions of 100 assigned for concrete and 300 assigned for unit paving. Once those are created, you can still highlight those. You can edit that and you can change things there. So again, this numeric division means that as I add in unit paving underneath that paving division, they'll start at number 300, 301, 302, and so on. And also right there in that division list, as mentioned, that's where we're going to implement drag and drop to reorder them. So really that awesome. Mm -hmm. Very cool, very cool. Okay. You know, I when think does the might option be... to? Oh, go uh, ahead. We've got one more. Uh, when does oh, the option that... to include quantity in the schedule become activated? That's a great point, and um, I, I come across this question sometime when I'm using tickets or what I'm, uh, you know, helping folks out. Oops. Still working on those habits. All right, quantity is grayed out because this is an entire palette schedule. So think of this as a database. Think of this as your brain and you're putting together your ref don't manager. And this is every single dream item that you hope that your client okays, that is going to, you know, you hope it fits into the budget and it's going to go into the plan. And you're, you're putting all these items together. You don't have to place any of them into your drawing for that data to then be pulled into your schedule and be presented back, you can just select this entire palette option and it's gonna pull everything out of here as is in conjunction with the settings that you attach to everything and in conjunction with the user fields that you assign to it, you say, okay, and you can run one of those. In this case, what I was demonstrating, those enormous schedules that include everything in that palette, the entire palette. As soon as I deselect that, that pulls in the option to run quantities. And I can then say, okay, and I can go hunt down a work area. I can select one of these work areas and I can quantify that content with inside that work area or within your drawing or however it is that you're creating your schedules. Well, very cool. Well, you know what? I think this takes us to the end of another fabulous hour. Um, really appreciate the feedback with everyone. Um, do please try out that RefNote schedule new function uh, that is there in the software right now. Uh, you just do have to type RefNote schedule new. And please give us your quirks or errors or issues or wish list ideas because now's definitely the time. You certainly, it, it, it's very helpful to us. You know, we certainly have a pretty good testing crew here. And like I said, we're gonna be spending a, a good part of this next month and a half really cranking this thing through every imaginable uh, iteration. But you know, what's even helpful is, you know, even a couple dozen real power users helping us out and doing the same thing. 
um, because there are you know thousands of possible combinations of how you could run these schedules. So really, really appreciate any help you can give us with testing it out, really stress testing it, making sure it works for all the weird little variations of schedules that we might not have thought of running. Um, very, very helpful. So do please try that out and then look forward to being officially rolled out, like I said, in the September timeframe. Um, that being said, everyone, boy, it's a pretty day here. We're luckily not too hot here on the coast. I hope everyone's able to survive this little heat wave. We're almost through it, right? But uh, have a fantastic weekend, everybody, and we will see you next time.